now let us identify the problems and remove them so we are going to make a full header again i'm sure we have already studied this but uh, let me do it again in case of full header we are going to add three bits of information a b and c this is the sum and this is the carry their values can be 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 1 one zero one 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 zero one 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 zero and one 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 the sum for this is zero carry zero sum is one carry zero sum is one carry zero sum is zero carry one sum is one carry zero sum is zero carry one sum is zero carry one sum is one and carry one okay so this is the full header okay and we need to identify see why there was a dependency dependency is due to carry only the previous video we studied dependency is due to carry only so we only need to identify can you make all those full headers or can you make that same ripple circuit uh, ripple header uh, uh, where there is no dependency using carry so we just need to identify what is the equation for carry so let us find out if we implement this carry if we implement this carry this is the k map this is a this is bc 0 1 0 0 0 1 1 1 1 0 and this is 1 at if you implement this 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 this is 1 at 3 that means 0 1 1 this is 1 at 5 that is 1 0 1 1 1 0 1 1 this is 1 at 7 Or six, which is one one zero, that means one one zero. This is one seven. That that means this one. Okay. Now you can implement this one. You, you can easily get this K map. See, there are different ways of implementing this. You can make different uh, uh, sub cubes here. For example, you can make a sub cube like this. You can make a sub cube like this, and you can make a sub cube like this. Right. So uh, let me let me see. Let me uh, try to draw it like this. If I make a sub cube like this, and this, and this. So this sub cube is actually representing A and C. This sub cube is representing A and B plus this sub cube. It is representing B and C. So we get AC plus AB. Plus BC. Again, clearly, uh, I'm writing it again. AB plus AC plus BC. Okay. And you could also you could have also made a sub cube like this. Again, see there is one more way of way of making sub cube. So I told you in the previous videos also. So I, I we can get that thing from this particular also this uh, this one also. But let me. Uh, make it in a different manner this is a b c 0 and 1 0 0 0 1 1 1 1 0 we have one set this location now if we make a sub cube like this and one sub cube like this one sub cube like this then this sub cube this one is actually representing a and b and this sub cube is representing an xor how it can represent an xor if you take uh, what this one is representing this one is representing a b complement c plus what this one is representing it is representing a complement b and c now you can take c as common therefore it will be a b complement plus a complement b dot c which is equal to a xor b dot c therefore if you want to solve this k map then the solution equation will be containing a xor b dot c plus ab a xor b dot c plus ab so why i am saying a xor b because i am implementing a full header using a half header you, if you remember the half header in case of half header we got the sum as a xor b so 
I created I changed this particular expression to this one because we wanted to implement this full header as a half header. That that that, that is also easy. That is also valid, right? Now we are going to take make the use of this equation because this equation is denoting a carry. This equation is denoting a carry. Now in this equation, in every equation, for example, if we say we have a carry C naught, if we have a carry which is C naught, so then what is C naught? In case of C naught, we are going to give this as C naught. This is A naught as input. This is B naught as input, and this is the sum S naught. Now if we get C one, then for C one. If we give the carry C one, then we get A one as input, we get B one as input, and then we get S one as sum. Now this is going to produce the carry which is C two. Therefore, the C two will be. It is going to take A two as input, B two as input, and the sum which is S two and the carry which is C three. Again, if you want to take Uh, this we want to find C4. For C4, we need to take A3 as input, B3 as input. The carry C3 it is going to produce some S3 and it is going to make the carry which is C4. Now, can you make an equation for C1? C1. Can you make an equation for C1? Yes, I can make it. How can you make it? For C1, we can get the equation for carry by using this formula. For C1, we have A not, B not, C not, and A not, B not. That is for C1. The equation can be A not XOR B not dot C not plus A not B dot, right? In the same way, for C two, C two can be represented like this. It can also be represented like this: A one XOR B one dot C one plus A one B one. Again, C three can be represented like this: A two XOR B two dot C two plus A two B two. Again, C four can be represented like this: A three XOR B three dot C three plus A three B three plus A three B three. Right? We can easily get it. Now, in this case, in this case, it, it will be very tedious to write this same equation again and again. Now, let me give them an alternative name. alternative name for example in any case if i am going to write if i am going to write ai xor bi then for this i am going to give you the name which is pi and pi is representing propagation propagation function pi will be representing a propagation function if i have to write ai dot bi then for this ai bi we are going to use gi And GI is representing a generating function. GI is representing a generating function. So we have a propagation function and we have a generating function. So if you use AI and GI, then the above all these four equation can be written like this: C1 is equal to C1 is equal to PI dot C0 plus G0. C2 is equal to sorry, this is P0. C two is equal to P one dot C one plus G one. Uh, C three is equal to P two dot G two plus C two uh, plus G two. This is C two, and this is G two. And C four is equal to P three dot C three plus G three. P three dot C three plus G three. Now, in all these four equations, you can see. This equation is dependent on this equation. This equation is dependent on this equation. This equation is dependent on this equation. And we need to make all these equations independent of each other. And we already know what is the initial value of C naught. C naught is initially which is zero. But still, we want to make all these equations, which is in, uh, which should be independent of each other. So let me do one thing. If I am going to write an equation for C two, for C two we are going to put the value of C one. For C3, we are going to put the value of C2. For C4, we are going to put the value of C3. And again, we try to make them independent of each other. Now, let us uh, try to make all these four equations independent of each other. So, the first equation is C1 is P not 
C naught plus G naught. And what is C2? C2 can be written as P1 C1 plus G1. Put the value of C1 inside this, so it can be written as P1 P naught C naught plus G naught plus G1, which is equal to P1 P naught C naught plus P1 G naught plus G1. Right, so this is the value of C2. Now, what is the equation of C3? C3 can be written as P2 C2 plus G2. Put the value of C2. So, it is P2 P1 P0 C0 plus P1 G0 plus G1 plus G2, which is equal to P2 P1 P0 C0 plus P2 P1 G0 plus P2 G1 plus G2. This is the value of C3. In the same way, you can get an equation for C4. So, what is C4? C4 is P3 C3 plus C3. Put the value of C3. So, it is P3, P2, P1, P0, C0, P2, P1, G0, plus P2, G1, plus G2, plus G3, which can be written as P3, P2, P1, P0, C0, plus P3, P2, P1, G0, plus P3, P2, G1 plus P3, G2 plus G3. This is the equation for C4. So we got four equations. This is one equation. This is the second equation. This is the third equation. And this is the fourth equation. Right. Now in this all these four equations, you can clearly see that we have removed a dependency on each other. For example, for a C3, we removed a dependency on C2. For C4, we removed dependency on C3. And moreover, we made all these four equations dependent on C0 because we know what is the initial value of C0. Initially, the value of C0 is 0. So either you can put the value of C0 and then you can implement this function or you can implement, it, uh, implement these functions like this only. Okay. Uh, and why I did not remove the generating function and this propagation function is because this propagation function is dependent on the on the input and generating function is also dependent on the input. Propagation function is XOR and generating function is AND gain. Now you can see we made all this independent of each other. So because we, we made all this independent of each other, you can see this one mo more way of uh, saying this one that means we are identifying what is a carry ahead of it is being generated that means we are looking the carry ahead of it is being generated so this is also called as look ahead carry that means uh, a carry is being we are looking the carry ahead of it is being generated right so we are repeating the and repeating the same thing again so how can you implement this so let us uh, try to make it okay so let me wrap the screen before that so here we are going to use c naught p naught P1, P2 and P3 that means these are the input therefore let us uh, use one line this is representing C0 this is representing P0 then uh, we need to have C0, P0 this is representing assume G0 this is representing P1 this is representing P2, sorry, G1. This is representing P2. This is representing G2. And this is representing P3. And this is representing G3. That means the generating function and the propagation function. Right. So, you can implement what is how can you get p2 and g2 and g3 and so on that is very easy to implement so uh, the first one if i want to take c1 then what is c1 c1 is p0 dot c0 c1 is p0 dot c0 plus g0 that means this is p0 you have to talk, take p0 you have to make, take c0 and you have to perform an and then you have to take g0 and then you have to take an or of that. So this is representing 
C1. Okay. If you want to represent C2, then C2 is going to take C0, P0, and P1. C0, P0, and P1. This is C0. This is P0. This is P1. We are going to perform an AND operation. And then it is going to take P1, G0. G0 and P1. This is G0. And this is P1. We are going to perform an AND. And then it is going to take G1. And then we are going to perform an OR operation between all these. So this is representing C2. In the same way, if you want to implement C3, then it is C0, P0, P1, P2. So C0, P0, P1. This is P2. C0, P0, P1, P2. We have to take AND. And then G0, P1, P2. This is G0. This is P1. And this is P2. We are going to perform an AND. And then G1 and P2. So this is G1. This is representing G1. And this is representing P2. And then you have to take OR of all these. Right. So this is representing C3. In the same way, you can represent C4. And if I, if I uh, kind of know, if I put this inside a box, then this will be called as look ahead generator. This will be called as look ahead generator. Right, where this you can easily implement what is P0 and P1. Right, you can easily generate these functions. Right, so if we uh, represent this look ahead generator, then uh, you can implement these one P1, P, uh, P0 and uh, separately, and you can show this complete inside a box like this. You can show this complete inside a box like this. This is C1, C2, C3. And you can write the equation of G1, G2 and P, P0, P3. Okay. And that's it. So this is called as look ahead carry generator. And we can use this look ahead carry generator to implement a ripple carry header also. Fine. So we'll look at the sequential header after this one.